It's not with making the world a better place to live. God's going to destroy the world, uh, in case anyone forgot that. It's slated for destruction. There's no way to save the environment of the, of the present heaven and earth. It's, a, it's slated for destruction. Your job is to get non-combustible. <laughs> and it's full provision for it. Now we're in a section here of Ephesians where there's a lot of emphasis placed on together. Of course, all of the epistles or letters were written to churches, to a body of believers. There's some few epistles written to individuals, Timothy and Titus, Philemon, Gaius, the elect lady. They were special people. They were, they were kind of a leadership type people. There weren't letters sent to the private members of the congregations. They were sent to the whole congregation. We understand that they had to be read to everybody. Everybody had to get together and read it. Whether you were Laodicea, <laughs> and Jesus told you, I don't like what's going on there. I can't find anything good about you. Or whether you're talking about Philadelphia, who Bain had a little strength, but kept standing up all the way through. These letters are read to the churches. So it's a group type teaching. Now, a lot of people have never seen this. They read the epistles and they think just of the individual. We should, I should, I should. But this is a we should. That is, this is an assembly point of view. Nobody like place any value in a disassembled body, do you? You'd say that person's dead, you know, <laughs> disassembled. Well, these are meant to an assembled body. We're talking about things that go on when we're together. And if it actually happens effectively, don't worry, it'll go out. Now, people say today it's time to get this thing outside the four walls. I disagree with that. I say it's time to get it inside the four walls. You don't have to worry about it getting out once it gets in. Now, as is true in everything that pertains to life and godliness and everything pertaining to God, there's an objective or a purpose or an aim for everything God does. God said to Ezekiel one time, you will know that I have done nothing I have done without a cause. So there's a reason why God does everything. There are things that happen when we're together that they don't happen at other times. That doesn't say that there's nothing that happens at other times. We're not, we're not saying that. But there's a certain kind of thing because you've got a lot of input from different sources different members of the body of Christ. This is why the church is called Christ's body. This is how God speaks to the world. He doesn't speak to the world out of heaven with a th thunder. You know. <laughs> if God did speak audibly right here in Joplin tonight, there'd be a whole host of people that thought it thundered. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Some people who had a little bit of acquaintance with God might say, well, an angel, you know. Remember that time God spoke? <laughs> Jesus said, glorify thy name. God spoke out of heaven. God, right. He said, I have both glorified it, but glorify it again. Some people said, oh, boy, it's really thunder. It's going to be a rain coming. Other people said it was an angel. Jesus said he knew who it was. This voice is for my sake, he said. But God speaks through his body. Jesus speaks through his body. That's how he talks. That's how he speaks to the world. It's how he works, through his body. Amen. He doesn't speak through the president yeah. Yeah. or the Congress. Mm -hmm. This isn't how he works. Oh, yeah. That's right. Herod's got to shut up when it comes to the things of God. We're not, we're not going to Pharaoh and ask him what God said. Yeah, right. Or Herod or Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to Christ's body. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about now in this text. Yeah. Talk about Christ's body. In 1 Corinthians 12, which is speaking about Christ's body, the body's mentioned 18 times. Body. 
Most people read that text, they think gifts. <laughs> yeah. huh? This is what they think. Gifts. Yeah. But it's about body. Amen. Just in Ephesians alone, it's mentioned, he refers to the Christ church as the body yeah. nine times. Now the body views the saints from a functioning point of view. It's what the saints do that is emphasized in the body. It's what the saints say that's emphasized in the body. Paul approaches this subject in Romans 12 and he says that every person in Christ, he means in Christ, every person has received a measure of faith. That is a faith that's adapted to do something in particular. Then he mentions some of the gifts there in Romans 12. That's, that's Romans 12 version of 1 Corinthians 12. It's the gifts that were in Rome. And these gifts are calculated, they're meant for the body. These gifts aren't meant for the world. They're meant for the body. You can't find any place in scripture where gifts are mentioned in connection with the world. Or ministry to the world. Oh no. Ministry to the body. Yeah. Once the body is ministered to, it goes out into the world. Right. We don't want the church. Matter of fact, I think a lot of missions should put a, should put a hold on it. Yeah. I think a lot of evangelism should be stopped. Yeah. Till a church is converted. Yeah. That's the biggest mission field in the world, the church. The professed church I'm talking about. All right, Paul's addressing this here. If you build up Christ's body, the last thing you've got to worry about, if Christ's body's going to do anything, that's the last thing you have to worry about. You can persecute, scatter the people of God abroad, and they'll go everywhere preaching the word Amen. when they're built up. Amen. Now the body, as it gathers together, this is particularly tailored for the saints. The assembly is not really tailored for the world. It doesn't mean the world, people from the world can't come in. That's not what we're saying. But they ought to really feel bad when they do. They ought to feel like they are missing something when they do. Like that man Paul said came into the Corinthian church, you know, he said he'd come in and everybody's prophesying. He said, if everybody speaks in tongues, he thinks you're a bunch of nuts. That's what he said. If you all prophesying, God speaking through the members. The members didn't know about this person. God knew about this person. Here's the members, they're speaking. Speaking out of edification, exhortation, and comfort. And this man is convinced of all. Falls down on his face and says, God is in you of a truth. Amen. What was that? As the body... That's the body. Ministry. Now there's, I'm going to summarize briefly the purpose for building up the body of Christ. Why? Listen, the only people in the world Jesus mediates or intercedes for is the church. The only people God gives the Holy Spirit to are the saved people. Hmm? The only people angels minister to are those who are heirs of salvation. See, these are, now this is all taught in Scripture. It's plain enough. Because God, when he works through his members, he addresses all these other things that the modern church is trying to do without a built-up body. And what we got is a loud testimony to what the modern church has, which at Pertinere approximates zero. So we're on, for, we're on needful territory here, building up the body of Christ. Now I'm going to mention this in order of perceived priority. First, the church is being prepared to be a dwelling place for God. We were built up for a habitation of God through the Spirit. And in the Revelation, it says God himself will be with him. So that's number one. Number one, 
the church or the body of Christ is being prepared to be a suitable place for God to dwell in. Second, the church is a depository for the fullness of Christ. The church is called the body, which is the fullness of him that fills all in all. That is to say, Jesus taking what he has and he's pouring it out without it diminishing any in him. He's pouring it out into his people, into the body. That's what Ephesians teaches. The body is the fullness. That's where, if Jesus is going to give anything, that's where he's going to give it. That's the second reason. The third is, she's being prepared to be the bride of Christ. The church is what Jesus is going to get. And, it, and he's not going to take a defiled bride. And it's an insult to offer one to him. And fourth, this is the reason for the church or the body. The fourth is God is making known his manifold or diverse wisdom through the church. This is Ephesians 3, 9, and 10. So God is teaching heavenly personalities about his wisdom that simply it couldn't be no, it can't be known without what he's doing in the church. God is doing something in the church that's never been done among angels. It's never been done among cherubim and seraphim. It's uniquely done in those that are in Christ Jesus and he's showing these principalities and powers. He wants them to know how wise he is. They already know how powerful he is. They didn't know that already. How wise he is to take some a body of people that were dead in trespasses and sins, the vassals of the devil, Satan worked in them through his will, and has so transformed them that they are bearing the likeness and image of his son Jesus Christ. Now it takes that's not a that's not the result of power, that's the result of wisdom. Amen. Well, I tell you, God needs to be glorified for his wisdom. Yes. Um, you said that Christ is not going to accept the defiled bride. That reminded me of Babylon. Uh -huh. um, he's not going to accept that type um, at all. It's um, defiled. He's going to. Um, he won't accept a whore. He wants what is pure and what That's is right. right. Yes. Amen. 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 All right. This is the fourth thing. This is the last thing. To shine his lights in the world. That's last on the agenda. Because if the other first four aren't being done, there's no light to shine. Huh? Did everybody see this? All right, now we're ready for this text. 21st verse of the 5th chapter. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. <clears throat> I say submitting yourselves... He doesn't say, I'll make you. submitting yourselves one to another. It's assembly view now in the fear of the Lord. Now, this is a very strong word. I mean, I'll give it to you what some of the other versions say who have tried to, they try to kind of open this up because it's a per profound word. Let yourselves be ruled. This is what it means, though. I want to say it was, let yourselves be ruled by one another. Now, keep in mind, it's, it's God working through the members. That is, it's, it's in that context. Be submissive to one another. Be subordinate to one another. Keep on living in subordination to one another. So forth. Now, let's look first at the setting in which this text has been made been written. All of this is under the general heading that begins in chapter 5 verse 1. Be ye followers of God. As dear children, we're on, that's the thing that, that's being opened up. Being followers of God as dear children. Now 
Paul doesn't leave it to the people to figure out, well, what does it mean to be a follower of God? Let's have a special meeting. We'll discuss this and see if we can't come to a consensus on what this means. Uh, he, he tells you what it means. To be followers, how do you follow God? Well, you have to know where he's going, first of all. And you have to be able to recognize him. So here's how he, here's how he approached this subject, be followers of God, dear children. He said, walk in love. And he said, uh, no immoralities to be named one among you, not even one time. He says, uh, know that the wrath of God is going to come on people to do these things. You're a follower of God. These, this is what he's developing. Do not be partakers of the children of disobedience. Don't join with them in anything. Walk as children of light. Find out what's acceptable to the Lord. He's telling you how to be followers of God. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but reprove or expose them. Tell sinners what their sin really is. And he tells those that are sleeping, wake up! Awake thou that sleepest, rise from the dead. See, that's, that's follower. Now, you can't follow God if you're asleep. Or unaware of what's going on. Walk circumspectly. It's alert and soberly. You're in, you're in the enemy's territory. Never forget it. This is the devil's the god of this world. That's where you're at. Walk carefully. Redeem the time. Buy up the time for God. Use your time for him. Make the most of every opportunity. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't be in the dark about this. It's your business to understand what God wants. Not what God wants about you. What God wants about what he's doing. And uh, do not indulge in things that distort your thinking. Be not drunk. He mentions wine here. But there's other things that make people drunk. There's some music that makes people drunk. They can't think straight. There's some people that have spiritual experiences that make them drunk and they don't know what's going on. Let me tell you. you are, I know people say drunk in the spirit, but that's what they say. God never said drunk in the spirit. Amen. Somebody better use their mind and look up what drunk means. Drunk means you're staggering around. Drunk means you don't know how to talk. Drunk means you don't know how to think. And the spirit, he works just the opposite. He doesn't make you drunk. He makes you alert. Amen. And able to walk straight and able to speak right. Makes you sober. Sober. Be filled with the spirit. And uh, speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Build one another up that way. And give thanks. See, that's, that's how you follow God. That's, that's what precedes these, this, this, this verse here. Now, these matters that we've mentioned, they are to be prominent in our gatherings. They're to be prominent. Now, it's, it's obvious that if you don't live like this day by day, you're not going to reflect this when you come to the assembly. Now, there's some people today that... They teach people that you can go through a certain routine and it will suddenly change how you're thinking. You're, you may come in all built, you're all way down to the dumps, you're thinking wrong, but you go through this religious exercise and all of a sudden, whoa, you wake up, well, this is not true. If you don't come in, woke up. Some people that praise and worship advocates as you know, those two words are not mentioned together any place in the entire Bible. Praise and worship are not mentioned together in any place in any Bible. It's an idea that men have cooked up. 
and it's to make up for what they know is a bunch of carnal people. And so they tell the people the praise is like a portal goes up into heaven, it opens heaven up and God comes down. He's so anxious, see, to dwell in your praise. He'll come down. You may have been living for the devil for six days a week, but on this day, if you'll just shout this praise up, now, you can't get that out of the Bible. God inhabits the praises of his people. The praise in the first place is an expression of an insightful heart. It's not some kind of mechanics. Now, see, these, that's why I say these things that we mentioned are to be prominent in the assembly. The assembly is not for sick people. If they're there, they, it doesn't mean they can't come. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that's not what it's for. It's to strengthen the saints. And if someone's sick in spirit and they be around the saints long enough and they hear what's going on long enough, the Lord will prick their heart and turn them, or he'll harden it, and they'll leave, one or the other. It's important to say these things are prominent in the assembly, and with that in mind, the assembly, they're together, together, God's working in them, they're all living unto the Lord, in that assembly, submit. To God, no, he didn't say submit to God, he said submit to one another. Now, that's a strong word, submit. <clears throat> if I wanted to explain it academically, dictionary definition, to submit means to arrange under, to subordinate. That is, you place yourself under the thing you're submitting to. It means to subject, put in subjection, subject oneself to obey, submit to one's control, Yield to one's admonition or advice. It's a strong word. Now, well, this is, speak, this is not speaking of a, submitting to a tyrant. Yeah, that's right. Or someone that would harm you. Mm -hmm. Or someone that would take from you. Or someone that would manipulate you. They were not talking about that. Mm -hmm. That kind of person, God doesn't accept that kind of person. Mm -hmm. person who uses people mm -hmm. to advance their career, they are not connected to God. Yeah. The life of Christ isn't in him because that's not how Christ is. He's a servant. He come to give, not to take. Amen. I dedicate this to all our religious beggars it's on television. Said God gave him a ministry and we can't do it unless you send in money. What kind of ministry is that? Huh? Is this the kind of ministry God gives? Here's your ministry. Do your best you can to raise the funds. Is this what Jesus does? Paul never would have gone out if that was the case. <laughs> now this is a difficult subject. Submit yourselves. This is not good for the flesh. The flesh, flesh doesn't want to do this. It'll shout out, well, what I do is my business. This is a free country. I've got a right. Flesh doesn't like to do this, but this is the word, not all the members of the body. Submit yourselves one to another. Amen. Now you can do this because God has told you how these members got in the body. It's 1 Corinthians 12, 18. God hath placed the members in the body as it hath pleased him. So when you think of the body of Christ, every one of them have been hand placed by God in the body where God wants them to do what God wants them to do. Amen. All right, now that changes this whole, yes, yes. it changes this whole picture, submitting to one another, see? Changes it all. So in view of this, we can say, we should be humble. Let him humble himself. You can do this, because you're surrounded, in the body of Christ, you're surrounded by people God has placed yes. to benefit his other Amen. People, go ahead. Well, then, if a would resist, they would technically not be resisting the person yeah, of God. God. That's right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> in other words, in Christ Jesus, you're part of something that's bigger than you. Yes, amen. Bigger than you. 
And we're not disadvantaged by the arrangement. This brings no disadvantage to people that trust in God. Let me tell you something Jesus said about this. A person who is willing to forfeit all to be part of this body of Christ. Not, not this body, I mean the, the body of Christ. They're willing to, if necessary, they'll sever any other kind of, if necessary. They'll sever any other kind of association to be part of this. Here's what Jesus himself said. There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come, eternal life. <laughs> now, having been placed in the body of Christ, you've suddenly come into a tremendous wealth. Yeah. Houses. You need a house? God's people open up their house till you got a house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has happened here. Uh -huh. You've got... Uh, some relatives maybe you never had before. All of a sudden, got mothers, <laughs> sisters, brothers. You've come into a wealth of things. Now, who among you has not learned that those who were not blessed with godly families, and some people, they weren't, but they found a family when they come into the body. Some people were poor and impoverished, didn't have anything but the found houses and lands. Right, we've been welcomed in foreign lands. We'd, we've been welcomed and given a place to stay there when we were there. Well, what is that? That's part of the body. That happens in the body. So you're never disadvantaged by being in the body. All right, now that, that sets the stage now for what we're going to talk about. That's, antithetical to the world's thinking because they they say you got to look out for number one you know, you're really you're, you're advantaged by by pursuing your own yeah. your own needs and your own needs. but in in Christ and actually laying your life down for the brethren you you have all the other brethren laying their life down for you yeah, amen. amen so you actually end up getting more by uh, uh, surrendering your own your own benefit amen now I'll go along with this at the interest is at number one, but now let's establish who number one is. <laughs> Amen. Jesus is number one. All right, be subject one to another. One verse says, to each other's authority. Now let's look at the nature of the body of Christ. There's a vast difference between an institution and, or an organization and the body of Christ. There's a... <laughs> The body of Christ is more an organism than it is an organization. See, an organism is something that's living and there's, is, there's th parts in it that are interdependent. That's what the church is. The church is a living organism that has a variety of parts that depend on each other because they are the ones through whom Jesus works and into whom he pours his, his gifts. These things subject to one another. This is carried out in an environment of spiritual life. Like if you're in a dead church, you, you can't do this. And you know some people in dead churches, don't you? All, all of you know some people like this. This text is not for them. Unless there's a some live ones now. Jesus said to the church of Sardis, I have some even in Sardis. I got a few souls having to file their garments. All right, those are the ones they submit to. You don't submit to people that are not live, have a live connection with Jesus. I mean, maybe they'd be like a mega church minister. They may like own the building like John Hagee does. You don't submit to that. 
You're submitting only to the people in the body of Christ who are themselves living by faith and walking in the Spirit. Yes? If you don't have wisdom to know who to submit yourself to, you could unknowingly be submitting yourself to wolves in sheep's clothing. That's right. Amen. We'll see that you'll know by how, the, how these people minister to, your, to you. That will identify who they are. I don't have any idea how many professed Christians I know. It's way <laughs> in the hundreds of thousands. But, but all of them haven't really done anything for me. And some of them, the only way I have of knowing they're a Christian is they said they were. I don't really have any, <laughs> any other... Well, we're not talking about those kind of people. I want to talk about an assembly That's right. where there's been mutual benefit. Brother Jeremy. Yeah, this what we're talking about is like when you go to Africa or Pakistan or other countries, you don't, you really, their culture is different. And yeah. A lot of things are different, but you got this connection because of the body of Christ. Yeah. And you, you may not even speak the same language, but we've still got this connection. You know when you're with them. Is because of Christ. Amen. Not to underscore the uniqueness of the body of Christ. And to draw attention to the nation of Israel. Right? God chose them. Right? They were his people. But the people didn't serve God. And the people weren't required to serve God. When it comes to serving God, the Levites did it. That's what God said. I separated the Levites. I've separated them. They're going to do the service. Nobody else is welcomed beyond the outer wall of this tabernacle. Did you know that? No Israelite could meander around in the outer court. <laughs> you stayed outside when you brought a gift to be offered. You set, brought it to the gate and a priest come out and got it. But the priests are the ones who serve God. If you wanted to utter a prayer, you didn't like bend your knee in the tent and pray. You went to Moses or one of the Levites and they did the praying for you. That's how it was under the law now. The temple service. If you're not familiar with the scriptures, I give you some text here, but you, this is the way it was. It was not like it is in Christ. They were to be considerate of one another, provide for one another. But you know, nowhere were they told to submit. I mean, they don't be submitting to Achan I mean, or Korah. They, see, this, this is a different kind of arrangement in Christ. It's a different kind of an arrangement. Once Jesus put sin away, this changed the whole, the whole landscape. Once Satan's head was bruised, he was destroyed. Hebrews 2.14 says, Through death Jesus destroyed the devil. Once Satan was destroyed, once principalities and powers were plundered, once the world was reconciled to God, once the sin problem had been settled, that changed the whole. In that context, we can read what we're reading now. The body of Christ is actually assembled by God himself. He put them in this body as it at, is that pleased him. Now the church is not a democracy. Everyone's not on equal footing. Everyone can come to God. Everyone can receive from God. Everyone has access to grace and peace and mercy and so forth. But everyone's not equal. I'll talk about the body now. So here's, now, here's how God states the case, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. God has set some in the church, first, apostles. That's the ones he made apostles, not people that say, I'm an apostle. First, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. That's not the Old Testament prophets. That's the prophets of 1 Corinthians 12 that speak of the edification, exhortation, and comfort. Secondarily, prophets. 
Thirdly, teachers. After that, don't miss that now. After that, miracles, then gifts, not gift of healing, gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best. I say covet earnestly the best yeah. Yeah. gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. And then the more excellent way is 1 Corinthians 13, the, the, love, <laughs> the love chapter. <coughs> the best gifts are the ones that give the most advantage to the saints. Yeah. Apostles, prophets, teachers. Now, any church that says they've got the gifts that follow that and they don't have proper teaching have lied because yeah. God doesn't give gifts to people that don't know anything. Yeah, right. Just in case you didn't know. These are people that have had the benefit of the apostolic doctrine. They've had the benefit of prophecies. They've spoken of edification, exhortation, and comfort. They've been taught properly. Those are the people. And these gifts are given at God's discretion. Yeah. The ones mentioned in 1 Corinthians are the ones the Corinthians had. The ones listed in Romans are a completely different list. Peter lists in 1, Corinth 1 Peter 4, he lists another completely different list. Ephesians lists a different list. The gifts that he mentions are the gifts that were there at that church. And these gifts that were at Corinth did it no good. They couldn't figure out it was wrong to have a fornicator among them. What land, I mean, that's kind of ABC stuff, isn't it? But all their gifts, they couldn't figure it out. They didn't, they didn't know it was wrong to sue one another, one another. They didn't know it was wrong to despise weaker brethren. They conducted themselves so deplorably at the Lord's table, God killed some of them and made others of them sick. But they came behind in no gift. When they got them, maybe they were on uh, they were on board, but some, something happened there. It was bad. I'm saying this because gifts don't compensate for a lack of godly character. Amen. They do not do it. Amen. Now every member is involved in these gifts, and the purpose is to the church to edify itself in love. That's Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Yeah. So when it says submit yourselves one to another, that's every member. It doesn't make a difference if they're 10 years old. It doesn't say now that 10 year olds submit to the leader of the youth group. Everyone is subject to everyone else that's in the body of Christ. Amen. That is when they're, when, they're, when they're doing what God has endued them to do. That's what we're saying. And the Lord manages this whole, this whole process. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 says, There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So the Spirit, He distributes the gifts. Then you read in verse 5, And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord who administers, makes them work, in other words. And there are differing activities. Everyone isn't like doing the same thing. But God manages that. There are a diversity of operations, but it is the same God that works all in all. So here's, you see how this whole process is managed. When you come into the body, God put the members in the body. Holy Spirit distributed to every person an appropriate Ability. Yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ is administrating it. Yeah. And God is down to the detail level making everything happen. Yeah. Now, I see in that context, it was submit, sub, submit to one another. In that context. 
to submit to one another, knowing you can do it, knowing God put the members in the body, knowing God's speaking to them, we're intentionally receiving what Jesus is ministering. Jesus is pouring it out by means of the gifts who minister to the body. So how you react to what that member does is really how you're reacting to Jesus. Now let's look at this a little further. When some member of the body speaks to us in love, we're to give him our ears. We're to give him our mind. Give him our attention. We submit to that person. Let him govern us. What he or she is saying, assuming it's from God, let that, don't be reading and doing something else during that time. See, in submitting to one another, we're intentionally getting from Jesus something we personally, quite frankly, didn't get ourselves. We're getting it from this other, right. other person through whom he's speaking. So we don't see each other as neighbors or friends or relatives. That's not how we consider each other. It doesn't say submit yourselves to your relatives. That's, what, that's not what it says. Submit yourselves to one another, to the body, members of the body of Christ. When the body is praying in order that we may be of one accord, submit. Shut your eyes. Stop doing other stuff and pay attention to what's being said. If we can agree, we got a promise from God. If we can agree, as touching anything, yes. it'll be done. Yes. But we can't all agree with somebody's mind of floating off someplace else. Right. Right. Doing something else, see. There was a time when I couldn't speak as frankly about this as I do now, but God has kind of cleared the way to approach this matter. And I do aim to do it. Now, particularly if you're younger, you have to learn to pay attention when you're young. Because if you don't, you'll be a scatterbrain when you're old. That's the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Now, you got to make yourself do this. And if you, it's, it's be, it'd just be like a lame man picking up his bed and walking. You think you can't do it, but if you extend yourself to do it, Jesus will help you. He'll help you to get focused. He'll help you to get control of your mind. Your mind, don't let your mind run loose like a wild animal. Yeah. Harness that thing. Yeah. Give it to God. See, that's submitting to one another. This is submitting to one another. Yeah. So-and-so is uh, ministering to us on a thing that perhaps we haven't thought a lot about. We know Brother Mike's doing this, you know, Brother Gene's doing this, ministering. You submit to him or her. That's what he's talking about here, brethren. That's right. yes. This is what he's talking about. Some people miss a lot of stuff because they don't submit. Yeah. Amen. Are you trying to make slaves? No, no. This is God that requires this. This is a, me. Yeah. Amen. This is not like a requirement we have for you can come here. This isn't this sort of thing. This is something God requires. Amen. Submitting yourselves one to another. That's in this context of a body that's ministered according to Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, growing up together in Christ, ministering the things of God, becoming stable and not children, speaking the truth in love, edifying itself in love. See what that's happening? You can't afford to withdraw from the process. No one's going to get on you if you do. That's your... It is our business to tell you what God requires. If Jesus is speaking to the twelve, and your name is Thomas, and you decide I'm not going to be able to come, that's the time Jesus breathed on him. And there's no record he ever breathed on Thomas. 
I'm sorry, it's not there. He missed it. You don't want to miss anything. Amen. That's being given by God. We're, we're limiting this to what's being given by God. We understand that. We're not trying to make people uh, just subordinate, like a subordinate for being subordinate, a subordinate's case. Not, not that way at all. It also ought to be noted that we don't assume everything that's said comes from God. And we don't assume it doesn't either. When the prophets speak, 1 Corinthians 14 says, let the others judge. Well, that's what a prophet speaks. So when any of the member of the body of Christ is speaking, those that are more mature to be evaluating it, we're banking on the fact that if someone, because of their own un ignorance on the subject, say something wrong, someone will correct it in a proper spirit. So we don't, we don't say that we just assume what's being said is true. It's, it's tested, tried. But when there's no reason to doubt it, you s submit yourself one to another. He didn't let it fit in there. He says, in the fear of God. What? <laughs> that adds quite a bit of weight. <laughs> in the fear of God, you ought to be afraid not to do this. In the fear of God. Now there's a need for uh, staying just a little longer on this subject. Because this kind of church is rarely seen in our day. Amen. See, so this is like a kind of a new thought to a lot of people. And God is very gracious in helping us to adapt to new ways of seeing things. But it's got to be guided by the Word of God. It, it can't, someone can't dictate this to you and you just do it because they said to do it. You've got to see the truth of this, see. But the fact that this is so rare at once, it, it sounds strange because it's so rare. Yes. See? Yes. Confessing <laughs> Bible churches. Yeah. The function in this matter will be seen as cults. That's right. Mm -hmm. They'll be called a cult. That's because right. they function as a body, yeah. as one. And they're not used to that. They're not used to seeing no. that. That's, that's oddball. That's out of, out of <laughs> focus. Now, this has been a very difficult thing for the church throughout centuries of time. Early on, this is distorted. And this is a, just this just isn't the way of organized religion. There'd be preachers who'd be scared to death to do something like this. And I might add, they ought to be scared to death to do something like this. But this has got to be done. It's assuming now they've all been built up. What God intends for the church is, in fact, being done. If that's not true, then we've got to get to work on that first before we get to... Yeah. This can't be done unless the people are spiritual people. Yeah. You can see that, can't you? Mm -hmm. This is not like a pattern every church has got to go to. This is what happens when you're built up into Christ. Instead of putting a throttle on what everybody says, you're loosed. Yeah. <laughs> when you're built up, when you see things, you're, you're freed up to be able to say something. It, there's been women, men, young people say things here that have illuminated the rest of us. They just, God gave them to see some little, well, it wasn't little, but God gave them to see some facet of the kingdom that wasn't quite clear. Sometimes a child in their innocence is, spots it quicker. So they say it, which praise God, we submit. Submit to that person receive from him. Now see, there's been a variety of different kind of offices created in the modern church. Incidentally, I know of no Bible college or seminary in the world that teaches people what you're hearing tonight. Now, there may be one. I'm just saying I don't know. And I do know quite a few. This isn't being taught as a rule. It isn't being taught. Paul taught it. Not to a college, to a church. Yeah. Yeah. But I've never seen it function yeah. Yeah. outside of our fellowship here. Mm -hmm. I know I have a limited perspective mm -hmm. of it. I've never seen it function, just lip service. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, Sister Barb? You know, what I like to bring parallels to, to what we were speaking of, kind of see things. Uh, there have been times in the past when a person has been in need physically of help, and they, they don't want to do what the doctor has prescribed for them to do. And it was very strange to me. Uh, in this case, it would be that there there is a legitimate need to be fulfilled, and there is one that can fill it, being a doctor, so to speak. But you cannot gain what you need unless you put yourself in that person's care. This is, this is the submitting to one another in That's love. Right. And as the body of Christ, there are certain members that will have things that the other members are in great That's need right. of. Uh-huh. You He's won't receive it. unless we put ourselves mm-hmm. in their care. That's right. Amen. Amen. See, when you come to the assembly, and the kind of assembly we're talking about, there may be matters that God wants to address in your life personally. That's right. yeah. But he may not do it in your prayer chamber. Uh-huh. He may too, I understand that. So that's one of his options. Mm-hmm. But he, while you're in the assembly, somebody, not knowing what your situation will speak on that, you know, yeah. you think somebody told them, you know. <laughs> they didn't know. They have spoken out and God ministered to what you needed to hear through his body and they themselves were unaware of it. Yes, Brother Matthew. Of taking the children and putting them in their own separate class or those who won't receive what a woman says just because she's a woman. In the light of the purpose of God in Christ Jesus, there are, there are things that every one of these individual members has that we have need of. Amen. 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 It's a good word about being alert, mm-hmm. submitting to whoever's uh, trying to minister at a time. Being alert so you can hear it. I'll tell you, mm-hmm. this is uh, something. Let me tell you what I did last Saturday. I worked in the basement all day, chipping away. It was hot, and I overdone it. And even through the night, Saturday night, I didn't recuperate like I thought I would. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what, I told Melissa on the way home, I said, I will not do that again. Because <laughs> I had to fight mm-hmm. myself. <laughs> to pay attention. And be, well, I didn't like fall on the floor asleep, but I had to fight with my mind. We all can overload ourselves with too much right. stuff. Yeah, right. yeah. And you know, yeah and, it's, and, you, and you're doing yourself a uh, great harm. Mm-hmm. Go through the trouble of making the meat, but you yeah. can't pay attention. Yeah. Right. We admit that there are some assemblies that you don't have to prepare yourself very much <laughs> to what you're going to get but that you shouldn't go to that kind of assembly. We're talking about the assembly, assembly that's the way God wants an assembly. Now, it may have taken it a little while to get there. We understand. These just don't happen overnight. They had to be fed and nourished, feed the flock of God, nourish them, build them up in the faith, you know, bring assurance and confidence to them in the Lord so they can stand on their own two feet. When that happens, now, now they can minister, and when they do, you submit. You don't look at them and say, I remember when they couldn't. You don't, you submit. Yeah. Yeah. Submit to them. Yes? The danger of distracting influences is that they take your mind away from concentrating. Mm-hmm. If you concentrate right. your efforts on one thing, the you be That's more right. productive than looking at this and then looking at this and then coming back to this over here. Mm-hmm. You're productive if you focus all of your efforts on one That's thing. That's right. Mm-hmm. Now, I will tell you that in our time, it's very dip, focus is very difficult. Because there's all kind of distractions going on all the time, all around you. So it's difficult. So you have to learn to focus, concentrate. But when Jesus speaks, you you don't want to be out of focus. Not when Jesus is speaking. Now he says, do this in the fear of God. Now most of the versions actually say in the fear of Christ. Now both, both of them are technically right in order of priority God in the order of who's ministering Christ and Jesus covered this when he said he that hears he that receives you receives him that sent me and when the word Christ Jesus is not your Christ he's God's Christ He's your Lord, your Savior. He's God's Son and God's Christ. So see, both 
uh, out of the fear of Christ, fear of God, both of them are technically right. They're both saying the same thing. One is saying from the standpoint, fear of God, who orchestrated the whole thing, fear of Christ, who God's working through Christ. So bo yeah. both of them are right. <clears throat> Now the word fear, it means just what it says. The lexical meaning of fear is fear, dread, terror, that which strikes terror, it's be scared. That's what it is. But it's not the type of fear that causes the person to withdraw from God. Ah, that's the difference. Like Adam did. He feared withdrew from God. This is the kind of fear that makes you afraid to offend God. You're afraid to displease God. I mean, you're scared to, you're scared to displease God because there's some, there's some text in Scripture that tells you what happened to people who displease God. God spelled this out in Scripture for you. That if a person didn't please Him, so you'd be scared. And sometimes this kind of fear will get done what other approaches won't get done. But notice he doesn't connect this with what Jesus has said. He connects this with one another. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's the thing that makes this a resting statement. You submit yourself to one another in the fear of God. Why? Because God's the one that's working through those members. And if you don't subject them yourselves to them as they are ministering, by the power of God then you have resisted God yeah. Yeah. Amen. I don't know of any way to get around this and it's something you have to work out yourself I got all my work cut out doing this myself but everybody's got to do this this is what God said it may involve some um, inconvenience and but so be it Remember, Paul, remember, we're talking about when you come together. This is what Paul is talking about when he said to the Thessalonians, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as all she do. That's saying the same thing. It's just looking at it from the result yeah. uh -huh. viewpoint. That if you submit yourself, see, a person who's exercising their gift, he's like ruling in that matter. Yeah. He's like a king in that He's a steward in that, in that matter. That's how the kingdom of God in, in Christ is differs from the kingdom of Israel. In Israel, the people themselves, they weren't the stewards. Just a special tribe was the stewards. A steward, that's like a vice president. You're given charge of. So when he, you've got something from God, you're delivering it. Once you know you got it from God, now be bold. Lift up your voice and be bold in delivering it. And as you deliver it, those that take this text seriously, once that it's been confirmed, yeah, this is from God. I can, this is from God. I know it's from God. Then you submit to that person. You let them take charge of you for that, for that time they're speaking. See, this only applies to while they're ministering. This is a, isn't like a lifetime <laughs> arrangement. I'm sure you can see that. Committing to the fear of God. Jesus, well, Paul, Paul told the Corinthians when they were gathered together, they were with the power of Christ. 1 Corinthians 5, 4. And Jesus said, with two or more gathered, there am I. I'm in the midst. Now here's what it boils down to. The individual members must be brought to make contact with the head. By contact, I mean you're connected <coughs> to the head. So the head can work through that member. Here's how Paul stated it in Colossians 2.19. Feel that those who are vainly fleshed, puffed up by, by the fleshly mind, not holding the head, see, Christ, from whom all the body by joints and bands, that's where the body joints and bands, where they come together. By joints and bands, having nourishment ministered, 
and knit together. See, here's it connected to the head. Head's flowing down through here. As you connect with other people, it, it knits yeah. uh -huh. the body together. Mm -hmm. But if a person doesn't submit, yeah. this interferes with the entire body. Amen. Because there's things, because of the way you've been placed in the body of Christ, there are certain aspects of the kingdom that you need more help seeing uh -huh. than other things. Other things you can kind of see it right away and other things are a little more difficult to grasp but you can get it from one of the members of the body this this is how it's arranged it's arranged this way it isn't because you're dull or deficient or unlearned that that isn't what the cause of it is the cause of it is the way god has put the body together he's put the body together so you there's things you've got to receive from the other members of the body because otherwise you're expecting Jesus to dump the whole thing into you and he, you're too little. Yeah. Amen. Your vessel's too small. Yeah. Christ can contain the whole. You can only contain a part. Yeah. But where you've got a lot of parts, <laughs> well, you can see. Yeah. Then God will enlarge your heart so you can hold more. Uh, talked about the body until we come into the stature and the fullness of Christ. That's right. That can only be represented in the act. Amen. Well, I think I'll I'll close there. You, I'm you know, I'm sure you can see kind of the drift of where we're where we're going with this, but it's it's very marvelous to see how the whole thing works together. Yes, yeah, Sister Nikki. Didn't, didn't this, this, again. this submitting to one another is. Is really wonderful when you when you see it because when the the ones that we're submitting ourselves to are people of God, yeah, right. and if they love God, you know that they love His people and are saying things to His people that are going to be for their good. Amen. So it really, even if it's um, rejoicing with each other or on the other spectrum, if it's a rebuke, there's no cause to be offended because you know that they're saying whatever it is, it's for your good. Yeah. And so we can willingly submit ourselves to that and be thankful to the Lord for showing us Amen. and directing us. That's it. Amen. In, in one place, the apostle said, and who is sufficient for these things? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now whenever, you did, and every, on the personal level, everything that we are, it's, it's like Christ fills that up. But see, we just have a measure of the stature right. of Christ. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. We're not sufficient to show forth the glories of God just in ourselves. Yeah. It's too big. Mm -hmm. But whenever, like, if we sit down and we eat a meal, our whole body partakes of the nourishment of that meal. Mm -hmm. But the different members do different things with that. You know? Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. You know, the hands can work, can function like this. It's the same nourishment. Uh -huh. The eye does something else with it. Mm -hmm. Your knee does something else with it. Your foot does something, but it's all needful mm -hmm. for for the body, the body to actually, whenever you say function now, there's a, the purpose of a body is to do something. Mm -hmm. Amen. And to show something. Mm -hmm. And so it, all of it is needed. If God is going to be properly glorified, He's putting us in the body severally as He will mm -hmm. so that He is seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we see that we see the benefit of one another. It's like we get to partake of the whole thing without having to be the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's a big blessing. Amen. Mm -hmm. the, uh, that, that's an excellent thought that each member is given the rule in that particular yeah. that particular <laughs> slot. Yeah. That, that's uh, it kind of. I thought about reigning in life in Christ. Yeah, that's can, right. That's part of that. That's right. Being able to reign in that one that exclusive. Amen. 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 You know, on the heels of what Sister June just said, I, as she was talking, I thought about what you said. The body of Christ is more of an organism than it is an organization. Mm -hmm. See, an organization, there are many parts to it, but there's not as much unity as there is in an organism. That's right. An, organi 
is it's all working for the same purpose. See, in an organization, you can have many different departments that are working toward different goals that may be going two totally different directions. An organism is working toward one common goal. That's right. And the church, that's what the Church of Christ is doing. We're working to be spotless for to be Christ's body. Amen. 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 Um, I was thinking if you submit yourself to the world, it will always bring you down. Yeah. But if you submit to the body and Christ, it will always bring you up. Amen. Amen. Whereas if you submit to the world, it will always bring you down. Yeah. Submit to the body, it will bring you up. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else tonight? All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for placing us in your Son's body where it has pleased you. Now, Lord, we want ourselves to know where we've been placed, to be confident of it, and to minister effectively in that capacity. We ask for your grace and your mercy to accomplish this. And if it's difficult for any of us to submit to one another, we ask that you would teach us how to do this, knowing that we will not be put to any disadvantage. No one person will be exalted out of measure because of this, but you yourself will be glorified. We give you thanks for this arrangement in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.